Now to set the scene uh, for the content uh, of this next week, I'd now like to invite our workshop organiser, uh, Dr Liz Williams from the ANU School of Cybernetics to provide us with an introduction presentation. Thanks so much, Liz. Thank you so much, Catherine. I really appreciate the introduction. And <clears throat> welcome everyone. We are so pleased you can join us this week for the third Social Responsibility of Algorithms workshop, which as it turns out, kicks off the Algorithm Futures Policy Lab series. Thank you for being here. Thank you to my fellow organizers and colleagues who are involved in making this event possible. It's been really wonderful to work with you all to make the event happen, and I'm really looking forward to this week. Before I proceed, I also wanted to take a moment to acknowledge country. I'm joining you today from the unceded lands of the Ngunnawal and Nambri people, some of which is pictured here. I acknowledge the traditional owners of these and all the lands on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, as well as any First Nations people that are here with us today. With that, I wanted to start with a quote. The time has come to recognize a basic but vital tenet. When your technology changes the world, you bear a responsibility to help address that world that you have helped create. This was written by Brad Smith, the president of Microsoft, and Caroline Brown, Microsoft's director of communications. I begin with this because I want to spend some time exploring the concept of responsibility, in particular, social responsibility for creators of technology. My particular focus today is, unsurprisingly, on algorithms. They're at the heart of so many pieces of the technology around us, and as Alexis said, they're also ancient. In the history of algorithms, J.L. Chabert writes, algorithms have been around since the beginning of time and existed well before a special word had been coined to describe them. Algorithms are simply a set of step-by-step -step instructions to be carried out quite mechanically so as to achieve some desired result. The term algorithm came from Abdullah Muhammad bin Musa uh, al krazimi a Persian scientist, astronomer, and mathematician often cited as the father of algebra. A statue of him is pictured here. He never intended to coin the term. In the 12th century, one of his books was translated into Latin, where his name was rendered in Latin as algorithmi. His new methods and those of others working in the field came to be known as algorithms or algorithmus or algorithmus. But this word, which was once used to describe routine arithmetic procedures, has taken on a broader meaning. A common, a common definition of the term for com computer scientists is this, a finite set of rules that gives a sequence of operations for solving a particular type of problem. But there are rules that come with this more rigorous definition. These algorithms involve processes, they must be precisely defined, and they must end at some point. They must also have an output and they must solve problems. There are the delicate cycle on the washing machine, cool water, shorter wash, gentle spin, or your favorite recipe for chocolate chip cookies, the one where you must begin by creaming the butter and sugar to get the consistency just right. But there's more to the term than this definition. These days, the term algorithm is also frequently used to describe complex technological systems that have the capacity to make decisions, possibly on our behalf. So when we say algorithms, we could mean many things, ranging from simple steps, like a simple list sort, to complex technological systems like Pepper here, holding the hand of a child on the streets of Japan. So what does social responsibility mean when we're talking about algorithms? There are various definitions of responsibility, but one that rings true to my meaning in this one, in this talk is this one from the Oxford English Dictionary a moral obligation to behave correctly towards or in respect of. This begs another question, moral. A moral is a standard of behavior, a principle of right and wrong, which then traces back to ethics, moral principles that govern a person's behavior on the way or the way they conduct an activity. So building on this, social responsibility implies a moral obligation to behave correctly towards or in respect of society. Now let's consider how this relates to our ideas about algorithms. A socially responsible algorithm is an algorithm broadly defined that is designed to behave correctly towards or in respect of society. It's an algorithm, in other words, that's designed to be consistent with a society's ethics. That's one possible definition. Now, if we stick with our earlier definition of an algorithm, a step, set of step-by-step -step instructions to be followed, that might seem okay at first. Surely we can test whether the instructions we write are consistent with our, with our society's ethical principles. Can't we? 
as with most things, the answer is it depends. There's a reason we're all here today. Alexi, who's just speak, spoken with us, uh, one of the founders of this workshop series, summarized the situation back in 2012 in a piece called Social Responsibility of Algorithms, an overview. And I'll paraphrase his words here. We're creating autonomous systems with the capacity to learn, and we're giving them more agency. When we deploy them at scale, we often see problems emerge, and the capacity to make and influence such systems, which are by their very nature hungry for data, lies in the hand of a few players. Maybe you know of a few, Google, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple. The situation, as Alexis described it, raises some questions about how we create algorithms with social responsibility in mind. If we happen to be creating these artifacts, what society are we designing for? Whose principles of behavior are our autonomous artifacts meant to abide by? Particularly now, when technologies created in one context for one audience are often shipped halfway across the world. <clears throat> this is a quote from my colleague Ellen Broad's book. There are some, uh, the quote is, bias in the design of an AI system, what it's meant to do, what it's supposed to do, what information is considered relevant, is a reflection of the people behind it. There are some challenges in this, but particularly now, we design for what we know, and increasingly, we're in a world that does not reflect what we know. A new dimension of social responsibility emerged for me in early 2020, as fires swallowed up so many of the places I loved and filled my home with smoke and the makings of a pandemic slowly and then quickly burned. The thin veneer of civilization became so clear by the simple fact that so many things I had taken for granted, clean air, mobile service, water, transport, contact with friends and colleagues, suddenly became scarce. We live in a world of uncertainty. Our climate is changing and we don't fully understand the consequences of that change. Our interconnected world is also in the midst of a period of drastic change, driven partly by the coronavirus, but by other things as well. The many technological systems we rely on are not always prepared for what the world brings them. The situation brings this quote by Norbert Wiener to mind. By the time we're able to react to information conveyed by our senses and stop the car we are driving, it may already have run head on into a wall. Wiener founded cybernetics, which he defines as the scientific study of control and communication in the animal and the machine. He was writing about the dangers of automation about his observations that machines capable of learning can exhibit unexpected behavior, often on timescales that human observers may not be able to influence. This is important here in the context of vast climactic and socioeconomic change because responsible design means we need to account for these systems behavior in the face of futures we cannot yet envision. In considering this challenge, the field Wiener offered offers some lessons. He and his colleagues adopted a systems view of both humans and machines, one where dynamic feedback loops and information flow between human, technological, and environmental components of a system generated emergent behavior. Only in viewing technology as a system, cybernetics argued, can one understand and potentially influence that behavior. So with this in mind, we've taken a cybernetic view to the topic for this workshop. For this to work, we need you all to bring your knowledges to the table. Cybernetics, as we see it, is pluralistic, all our voices and perspectives are relevant here and are necessary for exploring what it means to create algorithmic systems with social responsibility in mind. So join with us to take a systems view of the algorithmic systems, past, present, and future that we explore over the course of this week. Thank you very much for your attention.